undefeated so far in your Bellator MMA career, but of course, so is the flyweight champion, Ali Malay McFarland. So with another win, is it too soon to start talking about a title shot? Um, I think nothing's too soon. You know, I respect her. And um, I'm going on my path at the time that, I, that Bellator feels is right, my manager feels is right, and I'm following what they tell me. You know, I'm always going to say, oh, I want to fight for the title, but they're doing what's best for me. And um, I'm just trusting the process and the path. Very good. You're a martial arts master. You're a model. And you've done so many things in your career, broadcaster, actress. What's the most satisfying for you? Martial arts, you know, I could be successful in any career I want. And I'm choosing to go this route because I know that the talent and the passion I have for this sport is an ordinary, you know. I don't have to be doing this. I could have stopped after my Tifono career and, and got into broadcast journalism or just gone into my acting route. But no, I decided to do this. I know what I'm capable of. I know my potential. And I know that there's something I need to prove to the world. All right, final question for me. How do you sum up Tara Graf as an opponent going into Bellator 243 this Friday? I think she's a lot older than me. She has a lot of experience. You know, she has a lot of amateur fights. We're both two, two we have both had two fights as pros, but... I don't guide by that. I know she's going to go in there aggressive to clinch me, try to take me down. And I just don't think she realizes how strong I am. Well, she's going to find out on Friday. Master Valerie Loretta, thank you for the time. Thank you. All right. Our next question will go to Brendan Tobin. Your line is live. Hey, Valerie. Um, you know, I know people down here in Miami are very excited for your fight. Mm -hmm. Have you heard anything um, as far as people back home, plans to, you know, responsibly, you know, get together to watch you and just kind of what memos have you heard from South Florida as you enter the cage this weekend? Yes, everyone is so excited. You know, everybody I know, my high school or went to my elementary, you know, everybody who's been following my career. All my Cubans in Miami are ready to watch me fight Friday and George couldn't get that first win for us, but I know I am. And just uh, what this year has been for you as far as uh, I'm sure you, you know, probably want to get a few more in the cage. It's been crazy for everybody, but just how happy are you to, to be at this point where uh, you finally get to get back in action and then move your career along? Yeah, I'm just so honored and blessed. You know, a lot of fighters don't have the same opportunity I have, and I will be the first female to get in that Bellator cage um, in this quarantine process. Um, I'm just really excited. You know, I, I'm also very blessed that I get to get paid as well. Um, I'm lucky that I stayed ready during quarantine. I was close to wait. So when Bellator called me three weeks ago, I was able to put together a quick camp and just let's go, let's do this. So I'm just looking forward to walking to that cage Friday and, and becoming 3-0. Bridge the time. Best luck. Thank you. Our next question will go to Mark Piocos. Your line is live. Hey, Valerie. Um, my uh, my first question is, um, your last fight, you went the full 15 minutes. Um, what was that experience like for you? And, um, you know, what were some of the um, learning lessons you took from that fight? So my last fight, um, I was... I, I was upset about it at first, but then I was grateful for it because it was 15 full minutes in a cage. You know, I wasn't tired, and this girl was going at me with everything, and it I... I learned about her a week before she was a Southpaw. It was a lot of adversity I had to face and change. And I'm just grateful with the outcome. But that fight I took away from me that every girl that walks into the cage with me is, is out to, to kill me. And this is the opportunity of their life. So I always have to be prepared for, for more than that. You know, it doesn't matter who it is in front of me. I know Tara's going to come in the same way. And I'm going to use the experience I learned from my last fight into this fight. Now go ahead into this fight i mean it might be a little bit jarring that you you may uh there's no audience there so obviously no crowd noise you'll be able to hear your coaches more clearly on the other hand um kind of what was your, what's your expectations coming in to this fight knowing that there's no crowd there and it's going to be uh, somewhat quiet um i feel a lot less pressure you know i've been sparring like that since i was a baby every wednesday my dad used to do sparrings like that where it was just us in the gym sparring and my dad would coach me, but this time, you know, I, I'm, I feel a lot less pressure. I don't know if, if it's just me, but I feel a lot less pressure. I feel like it's going to be funner. It's, you don't have to think about the crowd or all of that and just go in there and have fun, you know, listen to your coaches. It's like a sparring at American top team in our cage and just perform at my best. 
A final question. One of your goals coming into fighting was to kind of change the perception of what Taekwondo was in this sport. How do you feel that goal is, is coming around right now? Do you feel that a lot more people are kind of respecting the sport of Taekwondo now? Yes, a hundred percent. I feel like Taekwondo is becoming um, a lot more prominent in mixed martial arts. You know, a lot of people want to do the techniques that I know how to do. And Taekwondo is the type of sport that if you don't start it from a very early age, it's very hard to get that footwork. And I'm just blessed that I do have that. You know, Taekwondo is a beautiful martial art and I, it comes out of me naturally in the cage. You know, a lot of um, things in Taekwondo you can't do in a cage, but a lot of things I've picked up and I use in my MMA. So I know exactly how to use my Taekwondo in the cage and show off on my, my pretty kicks and knock someone out. Well, thanks a lot for your, um, for your time, Valerie, and best of luck to you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Mark Zero Giannis. Master Lareda, Mark Zerianis, Taekwondo Life Magazine. How are you? Hello, uh, the, sir. <laughs> how are you, ma'am? The question for you is how uh, this very difficult time during the pandemic, uh, how did your Taekwondo training and your Taekwondo background help you to cope with the challenges of this uh, unprecedented time? Well, the number one thing that I do have as a master in Taekwondo is my discipline and my respect. And um, I take that with me in life and I take that with me in my MMA career. And I feel like the discipline that Taekwondo gave me being a master and doing it my whole life was able to help me cope with adversity of quarantine, stay fit, stay close to my weight, keep my goal in mind, you know, not lose track of myself and stay ready for when Bellator calls me. Very good. Thank you. We look forward to seeing your performance on Friday night. Thank you, sir. Our next question goes to John Eric Polai. Hi, Valerie. How are you? Hello. How are you? Good. So, Valerie, my first question for you. Um, it's been a little over a year since we've last seen you inside of the Bellator cage. Every fighter has a different take on ring rust. What's your opinion on it? Are you worried about it at all? No, just because I haven't been in the cage for a year, but I have been sparring like crazy at home. And I did Joanna's camp for that fight and then quarantine happened. So I just think I've been doing this for, for so long. I really don't feel, I, I don't feel like it's been a year. I feel like it's been like maybe three months since I last fought. I feel very fresh. And I don't think that's a worry going into this fight. Yeah, and then it's the last thing for me here. You just mentioned Joanna and Jay Jack. Uh, I know that you train with her. How, how has she helped you improve as a martial artist and working with her? Well, just seeing how, how we sparred together, but above anything, just seeing her mindset and why she is a champion. You know, I share in common with Joanna more than I share with any other fighter in the world. I see myself in Joanna when she was younger, and she always tells me that if I stay focused, I'm going to be a champion. She sees the way I train. She sees how hard I work, and she sees how we have the same passion for the sport. You know, we both cry together. And um, I just learned a lot from her from a championship um, mindset perspective. And, you know, I'm looking to follow in her footsteps and her advice. Thanks, Valerie. Good luck. Thank you. Our next question comes from Gareth Davies. Good evening, Valerie from um, from London. This is London calling. Hello. Hi. Buenas tardes. Um, Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, señora. Um, I, I've got a kind of like a question that is probably slightly irritating. I'm writing a column in my newspaper on Friday um, about. Um, there's been, we've got the first ever all British women's world title fight on Friday night in boxing. Yeah. Terry Harper, Terry Belter Harper and Natasha Jonas. Natasha was in the Olympics in 2012. I covered both of their careers. Um, Terry used to work in a chip shop and now she stacks shelves in a supermarket as well as being a world champ. She's a beautiful person. There's been a few arguments back and forth in the last few days between Michaela Mayer, who you may know as well, the boxer, yeah, who was a USA uh, 2016 Olympian, saying, if I want to put out, and I don't mean 
sexy, but if I want to put out pictures of myself in a bikini and market myself as hot, as beautiful, as well as being a fighter, you know, you, you do the same as well. Is Should we just be looking at that as legit? Because it, we're, you're looking at the female form as well as looking at a fighter. Um, so I don't do anything for social media. I do mm. things for myself. For example, I am an extremely girly girl outside mm. of the cage. So the way I micro myself is not for social media and it's not for men. It's for myself. You know, this is the way I look. I've worked my whole life to have this body, to have this figure. I was a ballerina. I was a martial artist. You know, I do both. And I think that's where people mistake. It's not for social media. I am the way I look like. And I also am a fighter. You know, what does one thing have to do with another? You know, just because I look different than other martial artists doesn't make me any different. It's my identity. This is why Valley Loretta is different. You know, I'm a broadcaster and as a major, I have different passions outside of the cage and that's okay. The way I am doesn't mean I market myself like that. It means I'm a normal girl who has an education outside of the cage and that's what should be recognized. So it's systemic. Like you say, it's, it's, it's it's the whole issue of people having an issue with it. It's just systemic and it's nothing to do with individuals because it's you're just, just jealousy. Weak. It's just jealousy and they're not educated in that aspect. They've never seen it before and they can't handle it, but they will when they see me fed in the cage. Many thanks. Sorry about the irritating question, but it's no, great. No, 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 thank you. Have a great fight tomorrow uh, Saturday, thank Friday you. night, yeah. Thank you. Our next question goes to Mike Pendleton. Hi, Valerie. So recently, I know you talked about your connection with George and obviously down there in Florida, Miami, and wanting to be like an influence for the Cuban community. But my question is, aren't you already doing that, right? Two pro fights, you've won both. You're, you're knocking on the doorstep of a bigger point in your career. And I think in that Latin and Hispanic culture, they, they already look at you, an actress, all that you do, everything that you do, aren't you already there? I know you don't have a BMF title or anything like that, but you're already there. You're already making an impact in the community. Yes, I am making an in impact. You know, I'm the first Cuban female fighter to come out of Miami. You know, I hold a lot of responsibility on my heart to represent our community, you know, but George is who he is. You know, I follow a lot of his footsteps. I feel like I am getting there, but I'm very hard on myself and I feel like I'm not there yet and I'm not complacent, I'm not satisfied, I'm not gonna stop until I'm 10 and 0, have that belt and I'm the first Cuban American woman to have the belt for Bellator. So my, my last follow up here is with that, don't you like to shine in multiple avenues in your life to not only show them, you could be a world-class fighter, you're on your way to becoming a champion, but while, and almost similar to the last question you received, you can be a beautiful woman, you could thrive in other industries, but you can also be a world champion inside the cage. Yes, that's my message. You know, I think a lot of people don't understand it because it's too much for them to handle, but this is who I am. You know, this isn't for marketing. This isn't for social media. This is who Valerie Loretta is in and out of the cage. This is who I am. I don't feel comfortable with myself as a woman or training hard if I'm not being myself and staying true to my identity, you know, this is who's going to make me who I am. This is what's going to make me recognized by the public. And this is what's going to make me a role model to other women and young girls who feel like I do and feel like they're stereotyped for doing a sport that's more male dominated. Well, I know a lot of the Latin Hispanic community is obviously looking up to you, especially young girls. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you, sir. All right. Our last question will come from Andrew McCarroll. Hi, Valerie. Hope you're well. Hello. Um, I know you had to drop out of the Olympic team when your mother became unwell. I know she's a, a badass in her own right. I think she took her black belt <laughs> while she was pregnant with you. How big of an influence has she been on your career? And is that where you get your, your mental strength from? Well, my mom has 100% made me into the woman I am. My mother put it upon herself to keep me very feminine and give me a lot more aspects of life outside of Taekwondo because my dad was so um, narrowed into only Taekwondo. So 
my mom is the reason that I'm like this. My mom has styled me. My mom has put me a dance since I was little. My mom has done my makeup. My mom is my image. My 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 mom represents me. And um, when she got sick, you know, I learned a lot about myself and my mom, if she was able to survive something like that and fight that for me and my two sisters, you know, what is fighting in a cage and getting hit in the face? That's nothing really. When I saw my mom suffer the way she did, I know that my mom could beat that. I could beat anything, you know, it's in my blood. My mom did it for us. My mom survived that for me and my two sisters. And I promise you, I'm going to give my mom back and I'm going to change her life for the rest of our lives. We're going to be set for life because I'm doing this for my family and to prove to the world that we're special and my mom is the most special human being in the world. Absolutely. And you were on a, a reality show there recently as well, Jorge Masvidal said when he, that was kind of like the turning point in his career when he was in that, he found a renewed focus. Coming out of the back of that, have you found you know, a, a different mindset going into this that you were able to do from competing in another um, event? So being on that reality show, I had to face a lot of adversity. It was the hardest experience of my life, but it made me the most mentally tough and mentally and physically that I've ever been in my life. I got off that show and I had to reevaluate a lot of things in, in a different perspective and what truly I wanted for myself, who I wanted around my life and, um, what route I was going to go in. So that show, just being away from social media, being away from the phone, being away from my family, being away from martial arts, being away from hot water, being away from coffee, everything I had on a daily basis just makes you so grateful for what you have. And it really just forces you to lay down and think all day when you're not filming and, and it gives you a new focus, you know, and my focus was never lost. My focus was also always that uh, I need to prove myself as a martial artist, no matter what. I could be successful in any other career, but I need to prove myself as a martial artist. Something's telling me in my heart, I've sacrificed, I've cried, I've bled too much from when I was little to let this go. I, I had an extremely hard upbringing with my father as my grandmaster, and it's not gonna go to waste. I'm gonna use this to be great and show the world who I am. All right, thank you very much, Valerie. Perfect. Appreciate your time. Thank you.